Hey everyone, so 2020 Tiaguan Yins have arrived. We actually purchased four this year. So, you know, we pushed the bar out a little bit, but when you find ones you love, you find ones that you love. And if you've not seen our Tiaguan Yin video of us in China, then it's worth you checking that video out. It gives you all the information that you need to know about Tiaguan Yin, and then you'll understand some of the terms that I'm gonna be talking about a little bit more clearly here, because these three in front of me are pretty much from the same elevation. They're from the same cultivar, the Guanyin cultivar. They're from Anxi, but different parts of Anxi. So there's gonna be some production method differences between the different village areas of Anxi. But essentially, the main differences are in the processing. This is a Zheng Wei, which is the more classic way of producing these high fragrance, high aroma Tiaguanyin oolongs. This one here is Xiao Zheng, which means that it's been left a little bit later before they uh, fire it. And that means that the flavor profiles will develop differently. So the, the interactions of all the compounds in the leaf will change slightly. And this one here is a Xiao Qing, so even later. So basically this one here has had the shortest period of time between the withering, rolling and Firing this slightly longer and longer still. This is going to be our superior iron goddess this year. So every year we bring out our Zheng Wei superior iron goddess, the archetypal, our sort of idea of the pinnacle Tiaguanyin Zheng Wei style. This one is golden yolk, which we've had before, which had a similar flavor profile. And this one is Sip Spring. Again, we've had before as a limited edition, which had a, have a similar profile. These guy ones are warm. This is how I do my sampling and, uh, and approval using the Gongfu Solo, which is basically a small guy one and that pours perfectly into a cup. So there's no need for a Gong Dao Bei. It means I can taste a lot of teas with a small footprint, but is perfect for brewing by yourself. We've just released the kit. So if you want a guy one, uh, a cup and a towel for your desktop brewing, then go check out the Gong Fu Solo. So let's have a sniff of these warm guy ones. So I'm getting all of those notes, which I love. We're getting a lot of honeysuckle. Uh, so floral notes. We're also getting some, um, some tang, some sourness, like some sorrel, a little bit of yogurt, but it's that balance between floral sweet and slightly tangy. And this one here is very creamy, sort of malt loaf, custards, just malt in general. Very, very much more in the creamier spectrum. And then this one, very, very fresh. Like rhubarb, like freshly snapped rhubarb rhubarb yogurt very very fresh bright um very sort of a uh, zingy on the nose right let's have a sniff of these wet leaves and then i'm just going to give you a snapshot of the differences and then i'm going to talk about the fourth one the fourth chia guanyin just a little bit later i'm not going to do a full 10 step tasting I just want to give you a snapshot. You can check online, of course, for the complete tasting. Drinking in the garden, hopefully avoiding the rain. It sounds like a thunderstorm is brewing. Right, let's give this a smell. So it's a little bit more of the creaminess is coming out. I'm getting apricot jam, butter, like buttered scones, apricot jam some green apple, flowers, maybe a little bit more of those zesty roses, but again, a lovely balanced tea. Some creamy, some fruity, some floral. Into golden yolk, are uh, very much warmer, slightly nutty. I'm getting like almond milks and um, starchy sort of buttered new potatoes and um, Custards, golden yolk is the name, right? It has that sort of yolky, um, either, either in a custard or in a pastry. There is some sweetness there. I mean, some freshness there as well, but it's, it's more like a sort of face cream sort of freshness rather than a fruity or a zesty fragrance. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm getting um, some that rhubarb again. You know how rhubarb can be a little bit peppery? Um, very, very fresh, but not quite lemony. I'm not quite sure how to put it. Yeah. Um, yogurt, rhubarb again, maybe a bit of, a little bit of banana, but very, very green, green banana. So unripe banana. Okay, let's brew these up. Tiaguan yin hunting is always one of the uh, teas that you've got to act super quickly. There's so much Tiaguan yin on the market, um, but it sort of changes hands very quickly. So the moment that you find one that you like, you don't really have any opportunity to sit and think about it. You've got to just dive straight in. Uh, there are some other tea types that you have a little bit more of a window that you can sort of taste through. Um, but Tiaguan Yin's so much of it, there's such a vast quantity out there, um, vast variations in grade from meh to sublime. Um, and when you find the sublime, you've just got to grab it. You just, you, you have no choice in the matter. You just, you got to grab it. Beautiful, vibrant, lime, luminescent, green. You're not going to see that much difference in color, I think, here between them. Let me move these to the side now. Similar extraction time, there or thereabouts. I do notice here, slightly more green on this one. Don't know if you can see it, but slightly more green. Right, let's dive straight in. We'll go taste and texture at the same time. You're never expecting Tiaguan Yin's, at least this Qingxiang style, this high bright aroma style to be very thick, but it's nice. It's sort of a medium thickness. Immediately I'm getting an aftertaste, which is great. The aftertaste is quite tropical. So um, people talk about yin yun, this sort of uh, aftertaste of Tiaguan Yin's. And for me, that's always something that's very fresh, very bright, very tangy, sort of, um, yeah, uh, sour apple candies I talk a lot. But this has a little bit more of a, a mangosteen note to it. So I'm getting those bright notes of mangosteens and apples, but I'm also getting this distinct sort of floral, slight jasmine, more honeysuckle and sago pudding. Supremely balanced, bright, light, high aroma, very, very potent aromatics, um, very high aromatics, right. On to golden yolk. Texture is a little bit thicker. Taste is very, very different. I would say more immediately the, the yin yun aftertaste is a little bit more of a starchy sort of sweetness. Mm, what is that? It reminds me of like um, pancakes, you know, that sort of. Um, the sweetness that comes from that batter. Albeit maybe with a little bit of complexity there, maybe it's like a different, like uh, an heirloom flour. Maybe it's like buckwheat pancake. So it just has a little bit more nuttiness than sort of a simple pancake taste. There's also a sort of coconut note here. Like toasted coconut, lightly toasted coconut much starchier, much rounder, much warmer, much creamier, more sort of balanced interplay between fruits, flowers, and uh, sago, I said, didn't I? All right, sip spring. Refreshing, bright, quite nice thickness, actually, sort of, again, medium thickness, I would say similar to, to the golden yolk. That rhubarb is coming through quite a lot. Mm. Definitely distinct sort of sour 
not persistent sourness, but this sort of this um, sensation of sourness whilst the tea is in your mouth and after you swallow, it persists for a little bit and then dissipates. Sides of the tongue, this, this very interesting sour note. The aftertaste on it mm, is actually quite, quite creamy, quite yogurty. It has a sort of green banana, green coconut, sappy um, freshness to it. So more of a green freshness, more of a, um, a sort of unripe fruit freshness to it than, um, than say like a citrus fruit freshness. Mmm. Mmm. That sour sensation makes it really, really interesting. It's sort of like this, this little uh, glow of sourness zzz, and then, then, then dissipates. So that's the snapshot difference. I'm obviously going to write full 10 step tasting notes so you can check them out online. Superior Iron Goddess, the most balanced, as you'd expect, that's our staple. We want to incorporate all of the flavors and aromatics in, in one tea as much as possible. So you're getting floral, you're getting uh, starchy, you're getting fruity, fresh as well, and green. Golden yolk, altogether more in the starch and custards and malts and rounder and sweeter and warmer tones. Sip spring, the opposite end of the spectrum, bright, fresh, sappy, sort of green like uh, like the taste of spring just when things are, are flushing so we haven't reached that sort of ripe stage in producing fruits instead it really has um like um yeah like uh um like if you've picked a grape and it's just slightly under ripe and you're getting that little tang sourness really really lovely i love it for its freshness sip spring golden yolk Superior Iron Goddess, I'm gonna do my full 10 step tasting. And then finally, tea number four, Tie Guan Yin number four, actually is a sheeping Tie Guan Yin that we are planning on roasting. So this is gonna be, I believe, our first London roast of uh, Tie Guan Yin. So I'm excited, we're gonna test it all out and that will be the subject of another video. So there you go, Gong Fu Solo and Tie Guan Yin 2020 in stock. I hope that this has given you a little bit more information to assist you in your purchasing decisions. I'll see you at the next video. Bye.